Welcome to Vocation Station. Today we are going to talk about interview skills, uh, how to prepare for interview questions, what to expect, dressing appropriately for your interview, uh, how to follow up after the interview, and uh, we'll do a wrap up and a preview of next week. Yeah, so we'll just introduce ourselves really quick. Um, I am Sam. I am an OT student as well as my partner, Margaret, who you just met. Um, we are both from Temple University and um, we've been working with Vocation Station for a few weeks now. We wanted to make this recording just so that you have it for whenever you're available to see it. Um, so yeah, here we go. We're going to talk about interview skills today. So I guess the overarching theme for today is that preparation is key when it comes to prepare or getting ready for an interview. Um, so it is really important to kind of have a running list of uh, potential questions and kind of answers at the ready um, for you to receive, but also questions you have for a potential employer. Right, so when we are preparing for an interview, we really want to get into this uh, good frame of mind. So we have to get into an emotionally and mentally good space. Um, it's just as important as uh, physically preparing. It's just as important as, you know, dressing right and coming, looking physically well. Um, it's really important that we get into a good emotional uh, space so that we feel regulated, we feel calm, we feel confident. Um, and we also have to remember that an interview is a two-way process. So when addressing some of our nerves, um, the spotlight doesn't always have to be on us. We also kind of put it back on the um, an interviewer um, because we want to interview them. We want to see if we're a good fit for them, if, if they're a good fit for um, us too. So just keep in mind that you're an equal participant in the process. So think positively, know your worth, and you know, try and get into a frame of mind where you feel confident. Um, and in, in preparing, you will feel that way. So a few things uh, that are important to note are um, confirming the date, time, and place of the interview. Uh, if you do not have written documentation um, of the interview date, call or you can call or email just for confirmation so you're, you're prepared. Um, it is good to know kind of the physical um, location of the interview. So if you need to kind of practice uh, walking there or getting there and timing it out. So you, that kind of relieves a little bit of stress on the day of your interview. Um, it's important to um, review information um, about the employer, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that a, a little bit further on in the presentation. Um, having your strengths and weaknesses at the ready, that's kind of what I was just mentioning a minute ago about um, going in uh, with kind of like some pre-answers and ideas of how you can talk through your strengths and weaknesses. Um, and preparation of answers to potential questions. So um, we're going to go through a few um, potential questions um, coming up in the following slides. So one of the most frequently asked questions, um, which doesn't always feel like a question, is tell me about yourself. Um, in a way, it's really nice when the opening question is tell me about yourself, um, because you kind of get to lead the discussion um, but sometimes it can be really hard to answer. Um, below here is a link that we'll post below um, to a video that kind of sums it up and helps us understand how we might begin to answer this question. Um, but at the end of the day, you really want to highlight your experiences. You want to highlight your professional experiences, your education, um, any certifications that you have. You basically want to kind of sum up um, maybe a little bit of what you might see on your resume. It's not necessarily asking you about your personal life. It's not necessarily the time to, you know, talk about all of your hobbies, um, but it is a really valuable um, moment to talk about your experiences and demonstrate how you are maybe excited about some of the things that you've done, um, excited to implement some of the skills you've learned from those things, or maybe experiences that, you know, you spent a long time in and you've learned lessons from. Um, it's really looking for that kind of what's, what's your past, what has brought you here. Um, not necessarily, you know, 
what you like to do on Friday, Saturday, or, you know, many of your hobbies, unless they really pertain to what you do. Um, but so this is just something to consider as you're doing your preparation. What kind of bullet points can you write down about your experiences that would make you valuable for the job you're applying for? So another question a potential employer um, might ask you is, how would your boss from your last job describe you? Um, so when you answer this question, it's important to talk about your work ethic. Um, you can talk about how your personality fit into your previous position. Um, if you did have a negative experience, it's okay to share, um, but you want to kind of frame it in a positive light and talk about um, what you learned from that experience and kind of how you grew um, from it. Um, another question that is very, very common in, in interviews is, where do you see yourself in five years? So when you're answering this one, it's important to um, kind of tailor it to the company that you are interviewing for. Um, a company doesn't want to hear, or a hiring manager doesn't want to hear that they're going to put five years of training into you just so you can go to a different company, even though that might be your goal. So it's good to talk about um, personal growth, uh, learning new skills, um, expanding on what you already know. So that is a very common one that you will see. Um, and you know, it is, I was mentioning, or Sam was mentioning um, about the tell, you, tell me about yourself question. Um, you might get asked, what are some of your hobbies? Um, and this is a good time to share a little bit about yourself. Um, just make sure you're being truthful with them though. If you say, um, oh, I love to read. A follow-up question might be like, what are you reading right now? Or what's the last book you read? Uh, and if you don't have an answer to that, it shows that you weren't being honest in your answer. So uh, that is a good thing to kind of have um, prepared to answer. Yeah, it's a great point, Margaret. All right, so here's another, another question that you might get. Um, so tell me about a time when you made a mistake at work. Um, you know, other some similar questions to this are, you know, tell me a time, a, a difficult situation, or tell me um, one of your weaknesses. These kinds of questions want you to think on your feet. Um, they want you to be authentic and transparent and kind of humble. Um, you know, so th those are all really great qualities of an, em of an employee. Um, so they want to look at your problem solving capabilities. You know, when you did make a mistake at work, how did you fix it? When you did make a mistake at work, what did you learn? How did you grow after that? Um, so you want to be honest about the mistake, um, but you don't want to keep your focus on that mistake. Uh, you want to talk about, you know, what was the end result or what um, strengths you use to pull yourself out of that. Um, you want to, again, yeah, look at how you solve the problem and you want to keep it positive. Um, any of these questions that kind of get thrown out that make you think about one of your weaknesses or um, a moment of weakness, you want to redirect. Um, but you do want to speak to that mistake. You do want to speak to that hard experience. You don't want to deflect it right away. Um, but just keep in mind that you have the potential, you have the ability to kind of shift back the focus to something positive that makes you an asset um, in the eyes of, of the interviewer. Okay, so this next slide um, really brings it back to what I was talking about with preparation being really important. Um, so one question you might get is what do you value most about our culture and vision? So obviously this is not something you can kind of make your way through if you don't have a good foundation of what the company stands for and kind of what their mission statement is. Um, so you, um, with that in mind, I would utilize their website, um, and from there, you can tailor an answer to um, where your values align with theirs. Um, a lot of times, it's pretty easy to find a company's mission statement and vision statement on their website. Um, so that's it's readily available if you do your work ahead of time. Yeah, and, and to speak to that, you know, Margaret and I, as we interviewed to come in work with WIT, we had to understand the values of WIT too. So, you know, we know that WIT is founded in um, values of feminism. So how can we speak to that? How can we say that we value that? Um, and how can we, you know, envision ourselves and paint a picture of ourselves practicing those values at this association, at this organization? Um, so that's a, a, an example from us. Um, and that's how you should- That's a great example, Sam. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. 
All right. This question kind of might spark some uh, nerves because sometimes people are fearful um, about what their resume look looks like. Why have I had X number of jobs over the last X number of years? Some people are afraid that they have too many jobs. Some people are afraid that they have not enough jobs. Sometimes we're afraid that there's a gap in our resume. And um, this question kind of demonstrates how it really doesn't matter, you know, that you had five jobs in two years. It really doesn't matter that you have um, a gap of five years, 10 years on your resume. Um, but what's important is being transparent. Um, what's important is focusing on um, how these experiences have shaped our career and have shaped your decision to return to work or to you know, make the next step in your career. Um, so you explain why you've been searching for the right job. Um, you know, I was unhappy in the position that I was in. I knew that my passion was elsewhere. Um, I knew that it was the it was the right choice for my family. You know, you you can say anything um, that you think is an honest answer, but you don't have to share everything. I think the moral of the story is it doesn't matter what your resume looked like, you know, our own perceptions of um, you know, what it should look like, what our timeline should look like, it doesn't matter. What they want to see is how did you develop as a person? So share how you developed as a person and why you are here today. Um, so you want to have specifics about what your career goals are. Going back to Margaret's point, you don't want to share that you are looking to work at this next job for two years and then move on and do something else. They want to know how did your experiences lead you to this job and how can you bring those experience to this those experiences to this job um yeah i think this kind of falls along the same lines um about like your personal narrative uh so a question you might get is why are you working in this industry um and this is an opportunity for you to share um how your career has brought you to this point um and it's important to highlight um, what about your experience relates to the job you're currently applying to. So that also kind of ties in with the theme of preparation, knowing what the role is that you're trying, you would be fulfilling, um, and just kind of doing, doing your homework before the interview. Yep, exactly. All right, so here's some of our weird questions, and I know Margaret will be able to jump in on some of these because we've had fun answering these uh, recently. Um, so the first one is, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? And the reason something like this is being asked is because they want to, you know, have a moment of being playful, have a moment of experiencing your personality, but then, um, you know, kind of expecting us to share what qualities about that superpower, um, you know, can relate to our job. So if I could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, maybe I would want to fly uh, because I really like seeing the big picture. I'm a big picture mindset type of person. Um, I like to not only see the big picture, but I also would love the ability to kind of fly into areas where I can um, observe the little things. Um, and, you know, being able to fly would allow me to see the smallest things to the biggest things um, and see how everything relates together. Um, so that would be a good answer for someone who is looking for a manager position um, because, you know, it shows my playfulness. I would love to fly. That's really great. Um, but it also shows how my mindset and how my, um, how I look at things. Um, so then Margaret, do you want to answer the next one about winning $10 million in the lottery? Sure. If you won $10 million in the lottery, what is the first thing that you would do? Um, now I think like everyone has the urge to say like I would quit my job um, <laughs> but I, that's not a great answer. Um, I think I would answer that one by saying um, I would take myself out to a really nice dinner because it's important to, uh, to, to treat yourself once in a while and from there I would probably go spend some time with my family because I really value um, close personal relationships. Yeah. 
That's great. And then from that, you can see, oh, Margaret really likes personal relationships. She's going to be a good team player. Um, she, I know that I can count on her to be respectful and professional and friendly in the work environment. Um, so it kind of takes something that's a little bit personal at the start and then, you know, relates it to how you can operate in, in the job. Um, and then the last one, if you were an animal, which would you be? and why. Um, we really love this one. It's, it's pretty common, I, I'd say. Um, even if it's not for an interview, it's something good to consider. Uh, so for me, I would be a dolphin uh, because I am very playful. I love water. I am such a water bug. Um, but then from there, you know, dolphins are very intelligent. Um, dolphins, you know, travel around a lot. They see what's going on in the ocean. Um, and I think they're very loyal. They stay with the pack. Um, they always travel together. And I really value, you know, if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, uh, bring people with you. So I really like going far with my, my team, with my pack. Um, and I love being logical, like a dolphin. Um, but I'm also very playful. And you can probably gather that already. <laughs> so um, yeah, so again, you just want to answer show a little bit of your personality and then show how you bring that into the work environment and how you would be valuable. And that's really what's happening with all of these silly questions that throw us off guard. Um, so yeah, just consider some of those things. That was fun. <laughs> Um, so I think I kind of uh, danced around this a little bit before, but it is a very important to prepare questions that you can ask of your potential employer. Um, it looks, it reflects poorly on you if they get to the end of the interview and say like, what questions do you have for us? And if you say, I don't have any, it kind of shows that lack of preparation. Um, and it, that's something that I think a potential employer or the hiring manager will take note of. Um, so some general questions that you can kind of go in with um, about are, can you tell me about the day-to-day -day responsibilities of this job? Um, what do you think are the most important qualities for someone to excel in this role? And what are your expectations for this role during the first 30 days, 60 days, first year? Um, so these are kind of generic, but, um, you know, they are good questions to kind of have in your arsenal um, to come prepared with. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's just a matter of thinking about these ahead of time, writing them down, um, because they're good to have and, and they show good preparation like margaret said um okay so i think that you can understand what we're getting at um you know in preparation you also want to be practicing um mock interviews are so great um you can do them with you know your friends you can do them with family uh there are also um places i think handshake is a good resource um, where you can set up mock interviews. Um, so practicing, you know, it makes us com more comfortable talking about ourselves. Um, and talking about yourself can be very uncomfortable. Um, it can feel like you're, you know, self-centered or you're, you're feeling like you're being selfish or you're feeling like you're being self-absorbed. But uh, the matter of fact is you, you need to exert some confidence um, and you need to feel good about the things that you've done in your life and the thing, you know, your, your narrative, you need to feel good about that. Um, you need to feel, you need to demonstrate that you are comfortable, you know, sharing good things about yourself because they exist. Um, so again, they don't come naturally. So we need to practice. Um, it'll help you feel a lot more relaxed during the interview and um, you'll be able to answer more difficult questions. And I think um, the reason we share a lot of these questions and talk them out and ask you to talk them out is because you will realize that in answering some of the practice questions, you now have created a little piggy bank um, for you to answer other questions that might seem similar to those things. Um, and you can weave those answers into whatever the questions uh, are. Um, so yeah, practice with family, practice with friends, practice questions you have prepared and try some that um, you haven't prepared. And then I think with practice, you know, it, it does help us with our nerves. But as we're going into an interview, we want to just make sure that we are, you know, um, 
we are labeling our feelings. Am I excited? Am I nervous? And how can we kind of shape them to be beneficial? Maybe we're more excited than we are nervous. We want to get to a place where we're feeling eager and um, ready and confident and, you know, letting those nerves kind of sit at bay. Um, and that comes with practice. So we encourage practice, of course. Okay, so what kind of information is the interviewer trying to gather about you during the interview? Um, so a couple of those things are, um, do you present yourself in a positive professional manner? Uh, are you self-motivated? Do you communicate well verbally? Um, do you understand yourself, your strengths and your self-worth? Can you identify your skills and abilities? And are you knowledgeable about the agency? So. A lot of these kind of come from that preparation that we've kind of been driving home this whole presentation. So um, yeah, those are just a few things they're trying to find out about you. Wonderful. Other considerations um, when going for an interview. Obviously, if this is a phone interview, you might not have to consider all of these things, but certainly when we're going for an in-person interview and when we're going uh, for a virtual interview um, over video chat, we wanna think about our appearance um, and some grooming. So as far as our dress goes, um, you wanna make sure that you're dressing for the position that you want, not, um, you know, not what you currently have. Um, so there's no right or wrong way to necessarily dress. You don't have to be in a pantsuit if you are um, going for a position that does not require that um, or that is just not, not necessarily appropriate for that job. Um, but you wanna hold yourself in a manner that um, reflects what someone day to day might dress like in that position and then bring it up a little bit. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, you're professional and you all also want to make sure that you're comfortable. Um, specifically when going for a interview, you know, you're going to be walking around a, um, a company's campus, or you're going to be walking around a school's campus. You want to make sure you're in comfortable shoes. Um, I have, you know, been victim of having my heels start to bleed and then I'm thinking about that and I'm trying to push through and I'm wondering if they're seeing my, you know, heels bleed. Um, so that's a little gruesome, but it's, it's very realistic and it happens, it happens a lot. So make sure that you're comfortable and that you don't have to consider your comfort. Um, cause there's other things to think about during that time. You want to also avoid, um, loud clothing. You want to make sure that, you know, there's nothing distracting about, what you are wearing. Um, and you also want to, you know, maybe prepare the, the clothes the morning of, uh, before the morning of the interview. Um, you know, have it picked out. You want your headspace to only be thinking about, um, you know, the interview itself. You don't want your headspace to be clouded with what you're wearing. Um, so it's good to prepare before. Okay, so some other things to consider. Um, confidence and enthusiasm. So from the moment that you walk in the door, it's important to greet everyone with a warm and positive hello and smile. Um, it's also important to avoid one word answers um, and yes, no answers, because that doesn't really give the uh, hiring manager an opportunity to get to know you. Um, with that being said, it's also important to avoid long rambling answers um, because that really kind of, um, diminishes the meaning of what you what you said. And the interviewer doesn't want to have to cut you off and you want them to remember um, a strong, succinct answer. Um, sincerity is also very important. It's important to be yourself. It's good to laugh and show emotion, emotion when it's appropriate. Um, this really kind of will give the interviewer a better idea of who you are and if you're gonna be a good fit for the company. Absolutely. Some other considerations. Um, so nonverbal communication, I think it's very um, telling whether or not you are attentive uh, by your nonverbal communication. So um, sometimes research, well, research does show that it's often more important um, than what you actually say. So you want to be engaged, you want to be leaned in or, or sat up, you want to be making eye contact, even though it can feel very uncomfortable, um, it's okay, it's going to do good things if you remain um, you know, engaged with your eye contact. 
You also want to continually um, acknowledge what other people are saying by nodding to show that you're actively listening. With that being said, though, if you're nodding the whole time, you know, it, it kind of becomes redundant. So, you know, nod when they're making an important point, nod when they are answering a question that you gave to them. Um, you know, nod, be, be intentful and, and be um, authentic in your nonverbal communication. Um, and this kind of goes with active listening. So you want to focus on what is being said and not waiting to answer the next question or not waiting um, to see how am I going to answer this question. Fully listen to the questions that they're asking or fully listen to the parts of the conversations that they are contributing. Um, you don't want to miss any information. And um, if you don't understand a question, it's really okay to ask for clarification. It shows that you're engaged. It shows that you're honest. It shows that you want clarity. It shows that you want to, um, you know, provide the right response. Um, so yeah. All right, promptness. It is important to be on time. Um, so I would recommend arriving to the facility at least 15 minutes uh, before your interview, but I would wait outside. Um, it's important that you don't enter the office or the building until kind of that 10 minute threshold before your scheduled time. Uh, nervousness and mistakes. It's okay to be nervous. Um, the hiring manager expects that you're nervous. So if you do get flustered or nervous uh, or anxious, it's just take a, take a deep breath. Um, and to try to kind of calm yourself down. Um, you can take a moment to get back on track. And um, try to um, follow the interviewer's lead, so kind of mode matching. Um, it's important to be confident, but not too pushy. So that's kind of like on a, like a balancing act there. Right. Okay, so this next slide, these are questions that are, um, actually illegal questions for someone to ask you during an interview. Um, and the reason that we're bringing them up is because one, these are all pretty um, uncomfortable questions sometimes. And two, we want you to understand what your kind of rights are um, and that you do not have to answer these questions um, because they are personal and they really are not related to the job at all. Um, so some of these questions are, you know, what is your age or date of birth? Um, they don't need to be asking you that during the interview. Um, what's your sexual orientation? What church do you attend? What's your marital status? Um, these are all things that are obviously unrelated to a job um, and you don't have to answer. Have you ever filed for workers' compensation? Um, do you have any physical impairments or disabilities that would prevent you from performing this job? Um, you know, we don't want any workers' discrimination. So, there's no need to answer this question. Um, and then have you ever been treated for drug addiction or alcoholism? Um, again, these are things that you don't have to answer by law. Um, so if they do come up, um, you are allowed to, to deflect them. And we'll talk a little bit on the next slide about how to kind of redirect these questions. Um, some of these questions can be asked in a different and less direct way. That does not make them any more acceptable um, or okay to ask. Um, it is okay if you don't feel if you do not feel comfortable answering a question that is asked of you. You do not have to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can simply say I don't feel comfortable an answering that, and that should be a sufficient enough answer. Um, it is important. With that being said. Um, before your interview to think of what questions you do feel comfortable answering and how you may respond if um, any sensitive subjects are brought up, such as, I don't feel comfortable answering that. Mm -hmm. exactly. Did you have anything to add to that, Sam? Yeah, and I think, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard, to un it's hard to know exactly how you would react to those questions. So if these are things that you know you might feel uncomfortable deflecting, you're not as comfortable as saying, I don't, I don't um, feel comfortable answering that, think about ways that you would respond to these things. Um, think about it beforehand. And again, just have little taglines. Um, so for Margaret's example, it's, I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable answering that. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy to talk about X, Y, Z. Um, but have those taglines in your head so that you don't have to think about it in the moment. You know how, how you will answer these questions. Um, so yeah, it just goes a part of that preparation. 
Okay. So following up after an interview, uh, this is exceptionally important and it shows a lot of initiative and it shows um, your genuine interest. Um, you also want to consider that when someone's interviewing you, they are taking time out of their work day um, or, you know, they are choosing you over other applicants to interview. Um, so just make sure that you're thanking them for their time. Uh, it shows that you're respectful. It shows that you're a team player. It shows, uh, you know, it's, it's a good demonstration of how you would work um, with some of your coworkers. Um, so be brief. You know, it doesn't have to be very long, um, but it's very important. So email, hi, I had the pleasure of speaking with you today. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm really excited or I'm, I'm hopeful to hear from you soon. Um, you know, I, I could really see myself here. Thank you for sharing all the wonderful things about your company, about your, about your uh, job. Um, or you can call by phone and do the same thing. Um, thank you for your time. It was really pleasant speaking with you. Please contact me if you need any more things from me, um, yada, yada. Um, but just make sure that you do it because it, it sets you apart. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, we do encourage you to um, send us an email. We are happy to respond. Um, I'm gonna toss mine in the chat box right now. So it's on the recording. Um, Sam, I invite you to do the same. Yep. Here we go. And, hey, yeah. and thank you so much for uh, listening to today's vocation station. All right, everybody. Bye bye.